How you doing? Martin Lopez with Curiosity Theory. Today, we are going to talk about empathy. A curious nature allows to break down barriers and conflict. I feel that I'm walking out of here and taking my business to the next level. What this helped me with was how to put a structure around like my sales calls, how I, when I'm listening to someone, how to really separate what they're saying, the meaning of what they're saying, um, what their needs are versus like what my needs are. So empathy for me, it's one of those qualities and it makes us profoundly human. Like how else would we be human if not for empathy? Um, I think animals have empathy. They, you know, they, they could feel like I know sometimes my dogs, you know, when something happens, they kind of look and they seem kind of maybe more concerned or very, very connected. But human beings, I think we have empathy in a way that we could use it as a tool. And the thing about empathy, it's one of those areas that we often fail at as human beings. You know, it's not just the ability to be com connected with people's emotions. It's probably one of the most important interpersonal skills. You know, the skill, like the ability, the talent, the aptitude, maybe the expertise to reference somebody else's feelings uh, or their experience without taking attention off that person. I think that's a profound that's a profound talent. That's a that's an amazing gift to be able to have and expertise. And what I notice in conversations is oftentimes when we're talking to somebody and we're telling them something that's concerning us, they often will will tell us how uh, how they are like that. And my idea of empathy, my you know at least what we talk talk about in the curiosity theory, <clears throat> is empathy is not empathy is not. Um, telling somebody that you're like them. It's the ability to connect with the person with what's going on with the person. And, 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 and in a sense, kind of say, you know what? Um, I know what it's like to have that, but please tell me more about yours. And maybe you're not telling them, uh, you know, the, about you, but it's more about understanding. Like I understand what you're saying. I could, I could understand what that must be like for you. So it's one of those qualities, like I said, that make us pr profoundly human. And there's a lot of examples of what empathy is not. But before we get into all those, I'd like to bring on my guest, Hallie. Um, Lorenz, I think it's Lorenzato. Uh, I hope I'm saying it right. Am I saying it right, Hallie? Absolutely. It's Italian. Lorenzato. Yeah. Oh, here you go. <laughs> Lorenzato. <laughs> Lorenzato. See. I love it. So, Hallie, how about telling everybody about yourself, what, you know, kind of what, what makes you tick and, and a little bit about your take on empathy and I'll... I'll Turn it, I'll turn it over to you right now. Sure. Yeah. My name is Hallie Lorenzato. Um, I have been interested in empathy uh, without realizing it since I was a kid because I was one of the peacemaker. I was a peacemaker in the house, you know, kind of thing. And a lot of kids who become peacemakers understand empathy without even realizing it. Um, I ended up being an actor and a writer. And uh, then I went back recently and got a master's degree at USC in public diplomacy. And during those studies, I purposefully studied all the courses with an eye on empathy um, from what they were teaching me about public diplomacy. So I ended up um, creating a consultancy afterwards called Points of View Consultancy uh, that focuses on empathy, um, using the tools of acting and writing primarily to let people uh, understand what it might be like to be uh, in someone else's shoes, you know, uh, that. So, um, do you want to hear definitions? Because I think the, the biggest, there's two things that uh, people trip up on about empathy right away. Uh, the first one is, what is it? Um, and there's all different kinds of uh, definitions of it. Um, but uh, we'll unpack those in a minute. Those are really good. But keep going. I'm writing all kinds of notes because you're giving me all kinds of good stuff to talk okay. about. Okay. The, the biggest, going. I think, the biggest tripping up that people have when I often say I, I have this uh, this consultancy and I'm writing books and stuff on on empathy, and people go, "Oh yeah, boy, people need that. People need, <laughs> like people Damn. there. Oh, those. People. Give you a list of a couple people, they by the way, need right? That I have yet to have someone go really, I would like to increase my empathy. What, mm. I mean, actually I've had one person do that, so I won't say nobody, but um, you know, it's not one, of, it's all the out there thing because people think that somehow you have to, to have empathy. That means you have to agree with somebody. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely not true. You're not, you're not there to agree or disagree with someone. You're there to understand how they are seeing the world. Mm. And, um, and empathy allows you to do that more than just kind of wondering about it. Um, and uh, you were talking about whether 
you used a lot of different words about whether it was a um, a talent or a skill or a whatever. Um, I view it as it's an innate ability that has been blanketed by our upbringings and society in most people's cases. There are some people who have psychological issues that that block that. Um, and in some cases that those were psychological issues that happened after birth. In some cases, maybe it's, you know, the way their brains were created, but that's such a small number of people. I think it, uh, so therefore, I think it is um, a, a skill that can be recrafted, you know, mm, um, yeah. and it's not, I don't even think it's that hard to recraft it. What it does take is the ability to, to face uh, emotions and in some cases fear or things that you don't enjoy sometimes. Um, stepping into someone else's experience that is not having a, if someone is not having a great experience, yeah, is being yeah. willing to, you know, also feel what someone else uh, you know, the horrible thing is going through, but yeah, there's a lot uh, of discomfort in that. There's, it's yeah. not a, uh, you know, what I hear you saying and, and how, how my experiences and people that I talk to is that, is that if you don't, if you don't have something solid and when you're empathetic with somebody, often you're, you're in, in somebody else's world. So you don't have the, the, the foundation of however you put your world together. So you're just, you, you're just staying curious and you're kind of almost constantly in wonderment, like, okay, okay, you're kind of putting the pieces together. And until they are complete with how they, what they have to say, then you probably don't really have like a strong footing. I would say for the most part, however you can have a very, very, very strong footing and empathy, I think. Right. I mean, to, to stand open is really, and I think it's the same thing in curiosity, to stand open to uh, seeing something from a different way than your mind has seen it. it and yes. every single person, when, when I do workshops with people, one of the first things I do is, uh, because I've, I've been gearing this somewhat, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated with conflict resolution and empathy. Yes. So I've been playing with that. But um, what I usually do is I take people through the fact that they have a unique point, like an absolutely unique point of view, because nobody was born at the time in the location, in the family, in the social situation, in the whatever that they were, and nobody has had the experience they've had after that to mold themselves. So you're, so we go back and we look at what created your point of view, and then recognize that there is no way in the world that someone else can exactly match that. They just, that's great. They can't, right? Yeah. So you, I actually have people go back and say, okay, let's look at your point of view. Are there things in your point of view that you no longer wish to include in your point of view? Because they get stuck in there and you don't know they're there and they're good. Yeah. Um, so let's look at that. And then, then the next time someone disagrees with you, they're not trying to undo your point. They're not they just don't have the same point of view as you do yes you know and that's is that is that thing. from you as the as the as used as the investigator or you as the empathetic person that you're finding the other people that don't have is that what you're saying or I'm are you sorry. finding other so what you just said and i just want to get real clear on it yeah so you said then you run into other people and you find that they don't have the same point of view Tell, say that a little bit differently well, there's from me, from huge value in getting that because you can either a lot of people who end up in conflict end up being insulted by the fact that someone else has a different point of view from them. Like on, <laughs> on something. They're like personally yeah. insulted yeah. that someone doesn't agree with them. Yes. But if you but if you stop and look at the uniqueness of every single person's point of view and all the stew that was, you know, all of the carrots and the potatoes and all the stew that was created, their particular stew of their level of income that they grew up with, that their skin color, everything, that is their particular thing, right? Um, and so you don't, so if you look and get how unique that is, then it can be either that you can calm yourself down and not be personally insulted when, and that helps you open up to actually understanding someone else Yes. because you're not, the bound, the barriers aren't all up yes. or, and, and you get to like, love it. You get to enjoy it. You get to go, Oh, I don't have, this is not a competition, a point of view. They have a different one from me. What is their point of view? And then yeah. the curiosity factor can really kick in where you're you're not trying to impose anything about you because you know it's so different that then it just becomes going to a film and seeing another character you know going to the world and seeing the textures of the world and your whole world can become joyously bigger 
because they're not trying to, you're not trying to compete with other people's point of view and you're not trying to limit them. You're, you're looking at it as a, as a tapestry that another beautiful color got to get woven into your life knowing about. I grew up in a mixed race neighborhood, which is a rare thing at my. I'm going to slow you down really quick if you don't okay. mind. Cause you said a lot of really good stuff. And for, okay. for me, when I, when I look at curiosity is I want to understand versus just go, okay, okay, okay. Cause to me, it's really important. And I agree with, I, I agree with everything you said. And I know that that's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for agreement, but I want to unpack some of the stuff you said. So let's kind of go back to some of the stuff and if and you yeah. will, we'll get back to where you grew up and all that. I'd like to get yeah, back yeah. to that and move from there. So one of the things you said, and I really, I'm really curious about is you said that you use tools of acting and writing um, for, to, to teach, to, I, believe, I believe to teach empathy or teach the skill of yeah. empathy. Yeah. Let's go yeah. to that and let's start from it, there yeah. if you don't mind or enhance it. Okay. Yeah. yeah Cause let's, I believe it's there already, but yes, to okay. bring it back and to enhance it and all of that. Yes. Let's, let's talk about that. I'm really curious yeah. about that. Well, you know, I, um, I found this, I want to mention this book. Can I pitch a book? It's not mine. Absolutely, but can yeah, I pitch yeah, a book? Absolutely. We um, do it all the time. <laughs> great. There's a book here that I, I've read a lot on empathy. And there's a book that came out just this last year that by a, by a um, Stanford neuropsychologist. Um, it's called The Kindness. The War for Kindness, which I don't really like the title, but I don't like the war title. But that's but it's really wonderful, Jamil Zaki, and um, his and I heard him on an on a radio station first, which made me go to there. Um, I think I heard him on YouTube. Yeah, his yeah. his conclusion is that the best way to get empathy after they've looked at all of the different things is actually acting, is actually stepping in and role playing through acting. And I feel really lucky because I've been an actor for a very long time and I'm a writer, which does kind of the same thing. It removes the physical aspect, the writing does from the acting. So for people who are not yet ready to be physically kind of playing with what it feels like maybe to try and go into another emotional state or another character state, um, writing from a point of view of someone else is really powerful and really helps build back the ability to empathize. When I was teaching a class at USC on this, uh, I had a, it was a really interesting experience with one of my students. I gave an assignment that they had to um, remember an altercation that they had had in, at some point in their life and remember it very, very clearly. And I had them write out what happened and you know what went on. And then I had them take a position of someone who they were having the altercation with and rewrite it from that perspective. So say and it again. So I heard what you said. So, I, so, yeah. you, so you had an altercation with someone in some way. You go and you write as specifically as you can what happened, how you felt, what was going on, blah, 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 blah. And then they didn't, they didn't see this coming. <laughs> so they were like, oh, yeah, there's some blah, 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 blah. And then I said, okay, now take the point of view of the other person, write the whole experience from their point of view. And one of the students, um, came back and said she and her boyfriend had had an altercation at a border point um, when they were trying to cross a border and the border patrol person and it was escalating and da 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 da. And uh, she still, and she and her boyfriend were there and, and she still had energy about it. Yeah. And she said by writing from the border patrol person's point of view, she was able to release the, you know, this had happened years ago yeah. and she was able to release the anger and the stuff that she had had kind of going, Oh, okay. I get, where they, where that would have meant that maybe, and that would have been why they did that maybe. Um, and so that ability to write imaginatively, you know, um, the other person's point of view was really helpful to her. I do acting work the same way, um, but you know, was, uh, Zaki had said with all of the different things they found, the thing that was the, that built empathy even more than VR, even more than in the other stuff is, um, you know, virtual reality. Um, was actually acting um and so and so adding the physicality to that um and as an actor i have played roles i, I go back to the idea that the second block that people have uh, about this isn't just the emote of having to enter someone else's emotional state it's also the agreement factor i've played characters that murdered their children <laughs> I'm not going to say, yeah, go murder children because I'm acting, I'm stepping into that. So I agree with that. No, you know, but you do, I did get perspective on why this particular character in this particular play took that action, you know, and I have to understand it on some level 
to be able to portray it. So, you know, that that's a really powerful tool. And I want to also emphasize, and this comes back into the way you teach curiosity, you will never really know what someone else is going through. You will never match their absolute point of view. You will never really, really, but you can get so much, you can get out of your own to get as close as you can to actually understand. And then, and then you sit and you take in more. You, you look at the signals, the body signals, the voice signals when they're talking about something. You actually ask real questions. And I talk about in empathy, that's the third thing that I think is really powerful the writing and the acting. But the other thing I teach is the honest question, the true question, not the question that's trying to get someone to what you want them to answer, not the mm -hmm. question that is there just to challenge them, but the true open question like a small child would have. Um, children, when they're first little, they need things they for their survival they want they they'll like you or they'll be near you or they'll learn from you because it it helps protect them at some point they go to the point where they go why is the sky blue yeah they get they get there's a part of a child that it everything stops and they need to figure this one part out yeah that they get profoundly curious and right I, and, so, and they don't let that go right you're just gonna I, yeah Right, but that moment before, not like what, where's my food, where's my shelter, where's my stuff? There's a point at which they go, why is the sky blue? Which isn't gonna help them. It just is a question they want answered to know more. To I, know I think more. they do both, I think they do both. No, no, you continue yeah. to do what you yeah. continue. You always continue to be self-helping because that's how you survive in the world. So what no you're distinguishing, what you're doing is you're pulling apart and distinguishing that that kind of like wisdom moment, like there's right. like a wisdom. The moment, the there's moment like when a... it's not about you. The moment when it becomes not about you, it becomes about something else. Um, why is the sky blue? Why why are why are waves happening? Is there a big whale out there pushing the water in? You know what? Why, why are my parents it? fighting? And, and well, just and, why? Just yeah, the why? Yeah. The why becomes a real why, and um, that curiosity mm -hmm. is what helps grow empathy. Not why are you a Republican? Why are you a Democrat? Why did you vote for this person? Why did you vote for that person? Where people ask it like, I don't understand it and I'm hostile to it. But simply, why are you a Democrat? Why are you a Republican? Why did you vote that way? With a real intention to want to know. Yeah. It's right? that real curiosity that's behind that because when you like you can ask somebody why they're a certain political party, why are you Democrat? Why are you Republican? Right. But if you have a charge behind it, that 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 pe people connect with that, you know, right. that translates in the question and it conveys in the question. And so you have apprehension, you know, you have like people are gonna start to defend themselves, and you're just like the other guy that's like from your side that just, you know, does whatever they do. But uh, you know, and I don't consider when you, that true curiosity. Yeah, I think that's, that's manipulation. That's not true curiosity. So yeah. curiosity is a factor in empathy. Well, let's stick with that for a minute. Let's stick with yeah. that for a minute versus going over there because I think it's really important to distinguish what curiosity is not. I think that's huge because um, you know there's there's a lot of things that that um, that people think are curious and they're going well. I really I really did ask a question. I really was you know curious. Um, but a lot of people think like advising. You know, advising is curious. You know, like and and you know, that's not curious. That's not an empathetic, you know, curious response, you know, um, you know, consoling, you know, I'm consoling somebody. It's like, Oh, you know, I'm being empathetic, you know? And so, well, and, Oh, sorry. Go that on, no, no, brings go ahead. me back to the defining, the defining of empathy, right? Mm -hmm. We said, you know, so people get confused between the concept of sympathy, empathy, and compassion. They don't, you know, is they kind of use the empathy for everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, in Zaki's book, he uses what what he says, the research, empathy research people have their terms for it. I define it a little bit differently, but um, cognitive empathy, uh, motivational empathy and emotional empathy is how he mm -hmm. describes it, which which is simply to me, those are the definitions of sympathy, compassion and empathy. Let's so break them down for a fifth grader. Yes. Cognitive empathy is basically you look at someone and you cognitively you think you know that they're that they're having a hard time right you get it i get that that person just fell down and hurt themselves oh 
that's too bad. That what a bummer that is for them. Sympathy, right? Cognitive, I get it. Sympathy. Okay, I, I'm sorry that that happened to you. I get, I understand that that's a bad thing. Then there's motivational empathy that he calls motivational empathy, which is simply the addition to sympathy of the desire to go help. Oh man, mm -hmm. they just fell down. Oh, that's horrible. What can I do? That's compassion. That's I want to help something. Yeah. I want yeah. to. It's not just I get it that they fell in there. That's a bummer. But also, I have this emotional response that makes me want to go help them. That's mm -hmm. compassion. Emotional, what he calls emotional empathy is what I call empathy, which is I get it on a level that isn't just, uh, oh, I get that's a bad thing, but I'm trying to feel what it feels like to be down there on the ground hurting. I want to I challenge also... that. I want to challenge that to some level if that's okay. Yeah. So if we can take that apart. So is it, is it, I want to feel like it, like I want to have a feeling, I want to have that same feeling or a feeling like that, or do I want to reference like the feeling like so that I can connect with that, well, but not, but not have to have that feeling. I, I think empathy truly does have the feeling, but what you do, yeah, see, I don't think so, but I, what, I want, I'm, I'm right. open what to you it, yeah. do in your imagination, you're imagining what that person is going through. And I think that triggers your own emotional responses to match it. I think it matches it. That's what actors do. That's what, that's why acting is so powerful to teach this, right? It mm -hmm. now what you do with that emotional response and how you create boundaries for it so that you don't get lost in it, so that you don't become just this thing that just emo emotes everywhere is the question of 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 you know boundaries and empathy, which is really important, especially when you're, for instance, a hospital worker or something like that. And they have and you have to learn how to handle that emotional response and how to turn it up and down and on and off. And I, and I do that in the workshops. I talk about the levels of emotion that you, that, you know, you know, you don't want to take over, you don't want things to take over you, but so I do. From a, think it, so yes. from an acting, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, um, it's really, I'm re it's really fascinating what you're saying. Yeah. So the question I have is, so from an acting perspective, the yeah. actor, act, yeah. actor, actress wants to, wants to have an experience of the emotion to some degree, but have a boundary around it so they don't get lost in the emotion, but yet they can access the emotion and connect with yes. the emotion. Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I get that. And and I get that. I totally respect that. And, and, and I love that. Um, and from the perspective of the curiosity theory, uh, what we're saying is in the curiosity theory is to, recognize the emotion mm -hmm. and look for the access, look for the connection to that. Like um, I have this, um, this, this little, this, this little man, this like little chubby man, he could maybe a bear or something. And it's a picture that I use in the, in the workshop. And um, there's a, there's, there's two men with arrows in their butt. That's kind of like, this, they got these arrows sticking in their butt. And what I say is you don't have to, you don't have to stick an arrow in your butt to know that an arrow in the butt hurts. You could actually look at somebody and go, Whoa, I would imagine that hurts. That doesn't mean I need to feel what that is. And this is, I think, where my disconnection is. What you're saying, I think, and or what the gentleman's saying, is that to some level you are feeling something. That's how I def that's how I define empathy. You do it does, it's like the neuro, the mirror neurons click within you and set off your own emotional response, which is why people run away from it so much. So, and then, so it would, so then would, would uh, emotional intelligence, would that give you, that would be the, the, the power that says, uh, you know what, you don't want to dive too deep into that. Like you don't really need to feel that, but you have enough, you have yeah, enough exactly. of an emotional connection to that. So, yeah. okay, good. I wanted to, I, yeah, I, exactly, I didn't want exactly. to completely disregard what you said. I yeah. wanted to connect them and find a way to connect them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, um, there was a, I, I was sitting with a, a policeman at one point um, over coffee and we were talking, he was talking about, uh, we were talking about the empathy work with police because mm -hmm. I had been studying, working with that. And um, he's, he had this experience where he was in his apartment. He was ex-policeman at that point. He was in his apartment someone, this is kind of horrible, someone threw themselves off a balcony and hit his and to kill themselves. And they did. They killed themselves on his balcony of his apartment. And he called the police. And two police people came, a man and a woman. And the man 
went in and was like, oh yeah, this is why I, this is why I became a cop. I, you know, did it, he dealt with the body and did the whole thing and loved all of that. And, and then the woman policeman said, okay, we have the family coming. We, we've ID'd him. We know who he is. We have family members coming in. The guy's like, okay, you deal with that. I'm not dealing with that. Not at all. I'm out of here. I'm going to go to go and do some report stuff. You deal with that. And the policeman friend of mine was saying, look how, how lacking of empathy this guy is. And I said, no, this guy has huge empathy so much that he can't handle it. He cannot handle the emotions of dealing with the family coming and seeing what that emotionally is doing to them. Um, so he has to he has to close it down. Well, you yes. want to find a way yeah. of not doing that if because a lot of the machismo and a lot of that kind of bullying stuff is that. So you have to find that's where you find the emotional intelligence and you try and build safely ways of tolerating your your empathy so that so you don't turn it down. Let's unpack that a little bit. And so let's kind of take more of a, a, a kind of a neutral kind of area. Let's take a, let's take personalities. And, 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 you know, I've been in sales my whole life. So we talk about, you know, there's like a, a engineer personality, right? There's a, you know, an engineer, very technical and very, you know, this is, you know, they just, they don't seem emotional. Mm -hmm. And then you have, let's say we take, um, let's say make a teacher personality, you mm -hmm. know, uh, maybe more uh, or a counselor going to be more connected and more empathetic. One hopes. Which we would define. <laughs> What's that? One hopes. I have yeah, met yeah. some that aren't, but one exactly, hopes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We hope. Or, <laughs> yes. or let's take a, let's take a, let's take an artist. Let's just go, let's go engineer an artist. That's, that, okay. that's pretty easy to define. Okay. And so you have the, these, these completely different personalities and they, they often point to each other and go, wow, ooh, like this, that's not the way you do things. Mm -hmm. And then I look at like, and I, cause I work with a lot of engineers. I work with a lot of, you know, men and women that are very, very kind of like, you know, I don't have emotion. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't experience emotion. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I, I really, I challenge that. And I kind of like, it's kind of like what you said about the cop that walks out that oftentimes they have, it, they have emotion, but they don't have the awareness that that's an emotion mm -hmm. that they, that the, the gentleman goes, Oh, I don't deal with that. Like the cop goes, I don't deal with that. Uh, I don't, I don't, you, that's mm -hmm. your thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and then what you're saying is that he's very empathetic and my question or my, not my concern, but my challenge would be to that person. You may be expressing empathy, but are you experiencing it? Are you experiencing it as empathy? And I don't think that people necessarily experience what they're going through as empathy. They just do what they do. Yeah, I would say in the case of those two things, um, the, the person who's running away from the empathy um, shows signs of distress. In so they're experiencing with, emotion, with, right? Yeah, they're experiencing, they're yeah. showing signs of distress. Engineers, on the other hand, but when, they, but when do they? But do they, that's the thing, but do they, but do they know that they're doing that? That's where the awareness. Well, they don't, from. they don't know that. No, they know that they're distressed and they know that, and, and they know that, that, that stuff distresses them. So they run away from it. Do they know that it's empathy that's creating that for them? Probably not. So I'm going to back of, up even, and I'm, okay. cause this is, I just want to stay right here if that's yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So, um, so that happens and do they know they're distressed? Do they have an awareness of distress? Are they clear that they're distressed or it's like, that's just a that's just a knee jerk reaction. Like that's their way of being. That's right. how they deal with something. Right? Are they are they letting themselves clue in to the fact that they're distressed by something? I, I think I think that they let's have, go for the most part. Let's say for yeah. the most part. Yeah. Well, we're doing all this in such generalizations. Of course, yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. answer for the person who's standing there because I'd have to see. You know, I'd have to talk to them, ask them, curiosity. Um, but um, I, I think that's, I mean, the fact that they're running from something, um, if they do that a lot, they may have turned it into a knee-jerk response. They may, I mean, on some level, yes, they know they're distressed because their pulse probably goes up and their breathing mm -hmm. probably changes and all that. Are they paying attention to it? I don't think they want to pay attention to it. So no, probably not. So it's, it's, it's like the the choice of do you want to know about this or not or do you want to yeah. be like no no no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you know so yeah. and a lot of us do that about stuff you know yeah. we all we all have that those about, things we that all we do that about that. Yeah. so so yeah. it's like do, are we aware that we're doing this on some level yeah we probably are do we want to change that do we want to get brave i think it's i think it's courage 
I think it's, I think this stuff is courage. When I see a, yeah. a you know, I think when I to see To be someone, empathetic at that point is yeah, it's courage. courage. It's yeah. courage. It's courage. It's yeah. courageous. And I, and I think there's a lot of stuff that, you know, it, it takes courage to face. There's a lot of people running on fear right now, particularly mm -hmm. in our yes. society. A lot of people on running this planet, on fear. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people running on fear. It takes courage to stop and go, I'm going to face what I'm afraid of. It takes a lot of courage. That's the most courage. Or, it doesn't take I, or a, distinguishing, I am being afraid. Well, I am being afraid. Well, that's a personality thing. There's some people who get that they're afraid. And, that's some, what, and, that's and the they point, still yeah. don't want to face it. But there's some mm -hmm. people who change that fear into apparent bravado, which is why when I see someone who's really acting <clears> narcissistic <throat> or really acting bullying like or really, I know that they are truly terrified inside. That's really, I mean, when you get someone who's like trying to take over the space for everybody else and all that, it's so that they don't have to have anything come close to them really needing their courage. Yeah. It really, so it really is. You know, let's, so I let's think. take those two personalities then. Let's yeah. say, as I was talking about, earlier, let's take like the, uh, the actor and let's take the engineer Yeah, where the actor is, is in as a, um, as a generalization, right? Yeah. It has to be always. More, more connected to their emotions, more like open, you know, like, hey, you know. Although I've like met some really narcissistic proper... ones who are not, right? <laughs> I've met a lot of them. all yeah. about them. Because narcissism, yes. narcissism. But let's is... talk about the, let's talk about yeah. the, that archetype though. Let's just talk okay. about that version. Okay, the one who's for open. The point. Yeah, the let's just take open. a look. Because okay, I think it's, it's good for the, good for the point and good to unpack. Yeah, okay. So, um. Let's say the one that's just kind of like real artsy and just kind of like I'm going to chug trees and I'm just happy to be alive and I'm connected with you and kumbaya and all that. That one oh. that's just like, I love my art. I love that. Okay. That's different from what I view as an artist, but okay. I got it. I'm just yeah. going to use that. Create okay. that. Okay. That's fine. And then let's take an engineer okay. who's like aerospace, kind of like technical, yeah. you know, cross your T's twice, dot okay, your yeah. I's, then go back and make sure they were done and make sure right. everybody does the same thing. Right. Right. And then what I've noticed is that a lot of times they'll say that I don't really have emotions. I don't really have feelings. Mm -hmm. And it's all, you know, mm -hmm. like the police officer. It's mm -hmm. just like, boom, you know, you handle this and I handle mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes in relationships, you have this different, you know, you have this different approach. And I'm right. not saying either one is better. Right, right. Um, as, if anything, I mean, they're both probably very, very symbiotic because, you know, one is is, is an emotional, the other one's more practical and pragmatic, you know, approach. I think and, they mostly drive each other crazy, but go ahead. Yeah, yes. No, they do. They <laughs> yeah, do. Right. They do. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that's the whole point. It's like yeah. they do drive each other crazy. This is where empathy, this is where empathy you enter in empathy, you enter in the tool of empathy, yeah. where, where the, where the yeah. more pragmatic looks and say, and, and says and, out of awareness and goes, well, I'm being real pragmatic about this thing. Uh, where does that come from? Where does that come from in myself? Like, why am I being this way? And, and, and like you said to the other person, let me have some consideration. What does that other person, what does that other right. person feel? Let me look and, and see if I can connect with, with a person is, is wants this. Wow. I can remember a part of me or I can touch a part of me that would want that. Let's explore that. Well, that's why I said one of the first things I do with people is we track, we trace their point of view. Yeah. We go back and say, okay, who told you what? Where did you learn that? What, what makes you have the point of view of the world that you have? And do you still want that? You know, also like, I wrote okay. that as a note. Yeah. I wrote that as do a you note. Still want you, that? Said, like, you have you, a unique point of view. Right. So you said that you have a unique point of view. Yeah. And that was yeah. one thing. So, wanted. so let's, from your perspective, where yeah. does that unique point of view come from? Let's just kind of unpack okay. that for a it second. It comes from everything that has been experienced in life. It comes from whatever personality you were born into the world with and how you're going to roll or not roll with things or whatever. Because I've seen babies are different from each other. Mm -hmm. So it starts there. <laughs> who knows what that is? I mean, that's yeah. the miracles mystery thing. And then it's, then it, then it's what, the society around you and individuals around you have influenced you to believe about yourself and the world and your place in it. Um, you, everything from the large societal things of news and movies and all that stuff to, you know, whether you're allowed to stand or sit, uh, you know, when, if you have to, I had to ask permission to leave the table at dinner or where pe people put their feet up, the, you know, whether it's um, what, you know, how people, how people treat you in the world uh, as a woman, as a man, as a transgender person, as a white person, as a person of color, as a older person, as a younger person. Uh, and then it goes down to, you know, where you are and how your family raised you. And are you yeah. the third child, the first child, 
what were your parents going through while they were raising you makes your experience different from your siblings experience plus you know are you the one who takes care of another child in the family are you the one who, endless, who are taking care of all of those things and endless. then what someone can say to you and what you read and learn you go to school you learn things you okay, stop you real quick i'm sorry things. what yeah. somebody can say to you what's i didn't i didn't okay. get that one what a person what an individual person can say to you at an individual moment when you're paying attention can change who you are and yeah, okay got it okay okay got right it, I, it can I was, be as individual yeah. as that i had a yeah. friend uh, a mother of a friend who pulled me aside when I was a little kid and said, I understand what you're doing. I see you. You're a manipulative little thing because you're you're asking these questions and finding out about people, you know, and and I and took if you're it open in. And considering that. Yeah, you're going. No, oh, I God, took it in. And I, I like went, that. oh, my God, this is bad. And I abandoned that for a long time mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that woman was her energy was so like you're horrible because you are doing you're noticing things about people. Yeah. And that makes you manipulative because you're noticing things about people. And for a long time, I ran away from everything about myself that was powerful in that way because this woman had done that. That created my point of view that I was a person who should shut up and stay here and not do that um, because I believed her, you know? Okay, so let me, let me slow you down right there because that's, oh, oh, awesome. I think you did a really great job of, of communicating that. Like, that's like, wow, that was awesome. So thank you. Then we take the person you or anybody that has these experiences. We all have experiences in life. People say to us something, we take that on. We, I, I think what we do is then we command our brain to manage that for us. And our brain's like, your wish is my command. And Absolutely. 30 years later, we go, why am I doing that? And, well, you commanded your brain when you were 14 and, years old. Yes, actually. And absolutely. you haven't uncommanded your brain. Yeah. So, so what is that? What is that little point? What is that little, like, you know, when you looked at, like you said, you looked at the sky and you go, why is it blue? And then you looked at yourself and you said, like, why am I like that? Like with, with compassion, with all those things, with compassion, with love, with empathy, with yeah. all those things. And I think also with like an incredible amount of curiosity, which, which takes all those things and neutralizes those things. So you're not looking at it. You're not, you're not talking about it at the level of protection or defending or you're judging or judging, right? You're just authentically looking at that. Mm -hmm. What was that? What, what would you call that? Th that moment when you do that for yourself? Yeah. Therapy for me, it was. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Me too. It, was, I, it actually, it actually happened That's most, the process. <laughs> most significantly in this thing for me called EMDR therapy, which uh -huh. is this, this tapping thing yeah, the for tapping, post traumatic yeah. stress disorder. It helps with post. No, I mean, it's a, it, it, it's a therapy thing. Not, yeah, mm -hmm. there's tapping, there's different things, but EMDR, it's an eye movement therapy thing. Oh, okay. It's eye movement there. And it actually happened for me that way, uh, dealing with PTSD on something that I had taken in, you know, and then I realized, oh, I have the power to do this about anything in my any of the choices that i've made to believe about myself or the world you know any of that is possible to change if you really want to kind of to, to go to that moment of curiosity yeah. where oh i don't have to be like this and which is why i in bringing people to look at their own points of view i i, I add that extra question like mostly it's just to get to have a really unique point of view and so yeah. does everybody else yeah. so that you can be excited. That's the other thing I wanted to mention before I forget to. The one thing in, in sympathy and compassion, um, most of the time it's for kind of traumatic or negative things. You have sympathy for someone yeah. who's having bad compassion for some. <laughs> the cool thing about empathy is you can also use empathy for inspiration. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. You can role modeling is all about empathy. You you look at the rock singer on the stage and you go, wow, what would it be like to be a rock star? Yeah. Oh, I like that feeling. Now I'm going to go for it. I'm gonna, it inspires me to want to do it. So empathy yeah. has that added all the other part of the positive thing in, in empathy. So I just wanted to get that in because I hadn't oh, said that. And yeah. I just love that part of empathy is that it's not only about negative. You don't have to empathize just with the people who are just like breaking your heart. You empathize Whenever you use a role model, you're empathizing yes. with what they're giving you something that you can imagine yourself being. So you're stepping into their shoes in a positive way. So that's so the better, the more you, yeah. the more you hone your skills and specificity of empathizing, the more you can get more texture in your life and more be inspired by more people in more ways. So it's kind of great. 
Yeah, that's like painting a picture. You just did such a great job of painting a picture on that. Wow. Um, I love that. I want to back up for a second. Yeah. And so you went to EM, what do you call it? EMDR. EMDR. Eye movement, something, something. Therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Therapy. Where's where's the T? Yeah, right. So, um, so you went and did that and, but the, but the moment that I, I think I could be wrong, but I would say, but there was a moment before you actually got the training, you got the work, you got the, all that, that you considered, you had an awareness and considered there's probably something else I want to work on here. Or there's, there's something that happens in that moment that, that little, like I saw the, you know, why is it, why is the, why is the sky blue? Right. And then that to me is the moment of that's the moment of true empathy that you and true consideration and true curiosity where you Well, I were, I had been trying to And it happens over and over too. Right. I had been trying to get myself to move forward for a very long time. Um the reason why I mentioned the EMDR one was because there was a moment within that that all of a sudden I realized exactly what you had just said, which is I had told myself something really profoundly important about my limitations Mm -hmm. when I was 12 years old. Yes. And I had, and, and I had ordered myself to behave in line with that when I was 12 years old. And during this EMDR stuff, all of a sudden I recognized that something that I had thought was being self-sabotaging my whole life was simply the instructions I had given and listened to and ordered myself to do my whole life. And once I realized there was the moment of why is the sky, why is this happening? Why am I self-sabotaging that kind of moment? It was, it was this ongoing thing. But yeah. in that moment, it was like, oh my gosh, I actually instructed that. I actually yes. have done this the whole time. That it yes. was, And that was the moment where I could start to let it go and go, okay, now what really is that? What is that? Oh, that's, that's me being really good at following my own instruction, which was not a really wise instruction. <laughs> but boy, I held to it no matter yeah. what, no matter the level of misery it caused me. I was yes. like, no, I told myself that. So I'm going to keep doing it. I so then it. I had some sense of empathy. Then I could step in empathetically and go, oh, that little kid did that. That 12 year old did that. Okay, I'm not going to be horrible about this about myself anymore. I'm going to just be like, it's okay. I, I understand you. what you did. And now I forgive that. And now yes. we're going to go on with our life. You can use all that energy you just did to follow this instruction. I'm giving you a new one. Yes. Now we're going on, you know, yes. but it was, I had to step into that person of me at that time. And I had really, really avoided the child working child, you know, the inner child therapy stuff. It was like, nah, I'm not doing I did that. Too. That's yeah. like, that's like, nah. But when I realized that that it was really an instruction that I held to, like, I am amazed at how much pain and agony holding to this instruction has caused in my life. I better get to I know was, that guy. I was dedicated, <laughs> man. That was a 12 year old with a strong will. So yeah. um, it was interesting, you know. That's so I don't know awesome. if that answers that's your beautiful. question. No, I it, don't know if that answers. But. You know, I, I think that part of the conversation that we have, and, 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 Marty, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate it. And if you like what we're talking about, please like, share, let all your friends know um, what we're doing here because the commitment that we have, uh, and I, I speak for, for Hallie, is a commitment that we have is to, is to make a difference for human beings. Would that be yeah. accurate? Yeah, absolutely. So let me um, <clears throat> kind of like look and see um, what you were saying and connect it to my version as well. Mm-hmm. So when I was able to connect with that that little child, which I avoided, I avoid. I didn't want to do that's, that's stupid. That's like yeah, me too. To do, you know? yeah. And then when I saw the, I, when I saw what you had explained earlier, when we talked about is that I saw the commands that were made and that then, that then showed me, I, you know, I want to get, I need to get to know this little guy. Cause this little guy has said things to do. This guy built, there's an operating system going on in here exactly. that was built by a child. And yeah. I'm trying to act like a dad and a husband and an adult. And I'm like, yeah, yeah that operating system is not, <laughs> Not working. working for here, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so that that, but the 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 awareness of that was, it was kindness. It wasn't like you know, Martine, you're an asshole, you're an idiot because you're running on some old. No, right. it was like, whoa, dude, you know, there was a there was a, a a connection to that, which was which was very very clear, very and very kind, and I would say 
very empathetic. It yeah. just was empathy, which mm-hmm. was the 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 whole version of empathy, which was kindness, which was consideration, which was all those things. It was awe and, for me too. I was in awe of the fact oh, yeah. that that the power of that could reach all the way through. I was yeah. like, wow, that was powerful. You're powerful little thing, you know. So <laughs> there, it was kind of fun. In yeah. it, after it after it became agony, after it was agony, it was fun. So there. Yeah. Yeah. And and then and then it was and then what I was thinking about. Um, and I, it's a question for you. So this would have, so, and then I think about, uh, sympathy and compassion. Mm -hmm. I think when you can really truly get to know that, that, you know, that child, or you can really get to know another person, they may ask for sympathy. Mm -hmm. They may need compassion, Mm -hmm. but, but to, uh, to think that you know what they need, Mm -hmm. That to me is kind of like you're stepping on. That's where using... the curiosity comes in. That's where you ask a real true question. Yeah. It has to be a true, like they talk about faking sincerity. You can get anything if you fake, you know, if you if you can fake sincerity well yeah. enough, if you're, yeah. you know, you can't do that with the curiosity thing. It, you can't have the agenda. It doesn't you work. Can't it have the energetically agenda. doesn't connect. It does not work. You have to have, it has to be a true curiosity. It can't be an agenda curiosity. It can't be a fake curiosity. It has to be like, really, what? Really, what? What do you need? What do you want? What can I? And then be quiet. Because that's, yeah. that's all you got. The rest is taking in. That's all you got this direction. The rest has to be this mm-hmm. direction. Oh, I yeah. love it. So, and, I, and, and I'm, I'm, this is one of those things that I'm looking at. I'm trying to get the answer to something. And I just, I got a feeling I can get some access to the answer through our conversation. Mm-hmm. It's really the reason I wanted to talk to you. And the reason I want to talk to you this way is like, this is because I'm really genuinely curious about what you have to say. Mm-hmm. I already know what I have to, I already know what I have to say. And I already know mm-hmm. what I think. So, you know, I can, you know, all that all day long. And people ask me that, but I'm really interested in other people, especially somebody from USC fight on. And <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm a, SC fan football. Yeah, I'm not. I didn't drink the Kool Aid on that. I, re- I refused. I got one sweatshirt the day I graduated. That was it. I'm like, I'm not doing this USC thing. Okay, go ahead. I, I have a sweatshirt that's probably 30 years old. I got. I one. wear it almost every day. Okay. So when you when you connect with that child, when you connect with that truth, when you connect with that profound, um, let's say truth, that profound wisdom, that that core of who you are. Mm-hmm. How did you use sympathy? Can you distinguish, or did you even did you even use it? And how would you distinguish sympathy? And then how would you distinguish compassion? Can you, is there a way to do that? My Can story, we do one at a time. My story is a little bit different from that. I'm not going to give it to you because it involves <laughs> this whole weird way that I dealt with it, which was through my imagination. I created a, a literal space, and there were characters involved that I would go visit for their wisdom. And one, the, the, what, the one that I called the saboteur became um, the, the assistant because it had, been, it had been the voice that told me what to do to sabotage me the whole time. And once I realized it was actually doing what I said, we renamed it the assistant. And then there was, then there was a kind of a, it was a whole thing that I created in I my imagination it. of a little cave with the little girl holding a box with little, gemstones and each time I learned the lesson that I needed to learn to take it back into myself of self-love and of all these things she would give me the the correct gem to hold so I bought all these little glass gemstone color things and put them on a I mean it was like I did this whole thing I'm not really woo woo but this one was really interesting I had worthy of being woo woo yeah I had a shamanic (laughs) person try and help me years ago and she found helped me find my power animal so, mm-hmm. and I do that, I shouldn't do that that glibly because she she got really angry at me once that I wasn't, she said, if you don't honor what I do, get out. Cause I was like power animal. She's like, no, I do this. She was from Central America. She's like, if you don't respect what it is, don't do it. So yeah. she helped me find the power animal. And so that power animal became in the cave as well to all, to help guide me through getting out of the situation I'd created for myself by believing, by by listening to my, saboteur but by, by, mm. lis- by listening to what I told myself when I was that age to do because it had affected every part of my life every part so I slowly was getting back humor so I mean that humor was a green stone <laughs> all these things sometimes colors, I remember like, <laughs> oh, yeah I have the stones I still have absolutely them, you know? so it's like all of the elements that I'd like thrown like put down in this cave in this little box she was giving them out to me and I had to earn them Beautiful. 
I had to earn them by actually embracing them in my life, in my world, then I could have them. You know, you so it was a whole thing that I created. I haven't done that. I mean, oh, I, I don't know. It was, I will but buy is, that book. This is why, this is why it's like, it became a whole thing. My therapist loved it. He was like, oh, it was like storytelling yeah. for him. And I was doing this storytelling thing, but awesome. I had no intention of telling any of this to anybody. So that was interesting. Well, thank anyway, you for doing that. so I don't know about the sympathy, compassion part. Okay. I mean, it was okay. just, it was just, I was in the story of this. And of course there was sympathy and compassion all over it Yeah. to do it, but, but, but I not, didn't, didn't, but I didn't, out. Yeah, I just did yeah. it by, by uh, this fantasy storytelling to myself with these characters that I would literally do the the EMDR the t thing and I would go in. It's like a meditation. Yeah. I would go into the cave and they would tell me what I needed to know. Wow. I would ask, what do I what what do I do next now? What do I do? And they'd go, this is the next this is the next stone that you need to go for. This is what you have to do. I want and and one time I grabbed for a stone and they took it back and went, you are not ready. <laughs> You, you are not ready in. for you that taking, one. You yeah. cannot have that. I was like, okay. You know, it's That's awesome. bizarre. Oh, bizarre. I want to read this <laughs> book and watch this movie. This is a great movie. This is like this. Well, I write books and I write movies, but I'm not, not these ones. But anyway, not yet. So. I hope not we yet. hire you to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I'm going to kind of give you my version of what you just said, if that's okay. Sure. So, uh, and Armando, my producer will, 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 will attest to this. So there's a, an, there's a way that I look at it, like I, look at, we see our, our, our inner child or our little programming that we commanded uh, unbeknownst to ourselves. We just said, this is, this is what needs to happen because somebody yelled at me or somebody told yeah. me I was this. And we go, well, I don't want to do that. Or I want to be this, or we right. made a choice about something as though right. that would be a good path. Then we get older and we look and we go, Whoa, that, um, that serves itself to some degree. But, uh, I, I look back and I go, Ooh, there's some, I left some damage back there. You know, uh, I might want to change some things about me. So then I then saw that there were commands I gave myself at the age of five, seven, I mean, just all these commands. And then the point that I was starting to look at my ego and then I said, wow, okay, let me look, what's the ego. And I said, the ego is that thing that just kind of keeps the commands going. It's like the, it's kind of like the, uh, it's like the, the, you know, the Ram that gets, keeps getting thrown in, you know, and it just keeps expanding and like, it's going to grow itself. And at some point I looked and I said, okay, I'm going to need to, I, I can either fight with you. Like I'm talking to you, like, look at guy, I can either fight with you and we can have a fight and I'm going to win. Cause I'm going to, I just want, I'm going to win. That's just all there is to it. I'm going to win because I will do whatever it takes to win. Or what we can do is we could give you a new job. Yeah. And you can come with me. You can come yeah. with me on this journey. It's going to be fun. I promise you. Yeah. It's going to be a lot funner than the one that we have just been on. Although yeah. that was kind of fun. It's going to be a lot funner. And we're going to do this. We're going to do. So this is what it's going to need to be. This is what it's going to need to be. Whoever you are, you're, whatever we call that, whatever the name could be, is we're going to say, all right, we're done with that one. This is the new command. I'm releasing that command. This is the new command. We're going to go here. Now we're going to go here. Now, if, if, if you want to like push it, you can do all that, but I'm going to win. Right. That's just all there is to it. So the quicker you get on board and it's just, it was really a conversation that I was having with something that didn't exist, something you couldn't touch, but it was more real than anything in the world because it did exist. It existed in my consciousness. It yeah. existed as part of me. And it felt like it was my winning formula. It felt like it was the way I put myself together. And it was clearly my operating system. And yeah. until I was willing, until I was willing to take that and look at it, like, look at it, like, whoa, and look at the damage and look at the possibility that that energy, that that, like you said, that little 12 year old that you had, the power and the, just the, the, Jeez. but like the like that is a badass little 12 year old right mm -hmm. if that person can get on my side there is nothing there is nothing that could stand on my way you know yeah. and 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 that connection to that inspiration that purity and that just amazing human being has just been what's propelled me and and i i question i just asking you is that what you did in a in yeah. different it's exactly the same thing. I renamed it. I named it from the saboteur to the assistant. Exactly what you said. You yeah. can have on a different job now. Same energy. It's a huge amount of energy. So you don't want yeah. it to go away. Like, don't yeah. go away. It's life force. This is great. Yeah. But we're going to give you a new. I, I exactly did exactly what you said. I release you from the last assignment. I release you. We're giving you a new assignment. You're not sabotaging me anymore. 
We're not, you're not trying to stop me from doing something, stop me from being seen, stop me from whatever. You're not yeah. going to do that anymore. We're going to do a different thing now. We're going to do this adventure, as you say. So it's exact. it was exactly the same thing and done in a different you know, way. It can be done any way anybody wants to do it. Yeah. Um, if you, you know, and, and I, I needed to do it with EMDR because my brain, like this, because, because the PTSD thing was involved in it. And so to avoid that, the power of that was keeping me where I was. Mm -hmm. So the EMDR thing, they do it a lot with PTSD. Then, then you, then it could, it can re kind of configure your brain. So you're willing to make those changes more. And I don't know if I would have been able to do it without it. I was, I mean, that's great that you didn't. Um, need to do that, you know, that you could do the same exact thing I did without that. I needed it because the terror involved in the, yeah. in, in what Which would mama. come up to me yeah. yeah, when trying to do it was yeah. too much. But when I got that assistance of that other, that particular therapy, it, it, it pulled down the terror so that I could go through and do the rest of the work. So that so that's cool. Is there a better definition for empathy than what you just explained? I mean, like that is, like the, that is empathy, that's self-empathy, where you can look at yourself and you you actually are considering that and you say, this is the best path for me. I think that's compassion because we have slightly different, compassion. Okay. we have a slightly different em empathy definition, but but it's wonderful. Yeah. No, whatever it's called, yeah. it's a great thing. Yeah. People, no, it, it probably is compassion. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I, um, you know, I, I'll use a word and then once that, you know, and I, and I use a word and I'll define it the way that I define it, you know, curiosity mm -hmm. theory. So like, we're going to distinguish this word this way. Mm -hmm. And then once we, you know, the deeper you distinguish it, then you start to see that there's other parts to it. So it may be compassion. I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to think about, I'm going to listen to that one little part and see how that is compassion. I really, Hallie, I really appreciate this, this time that you've spent. Oh, with it was me. wonderful. I really yeah. wanted to hear about curiosity too, because that's a big piece in this. And, and I, I'm trying to, delve deeper in, into that. And I'm, I'm dealing more with, uh, uh, I'm looking more towards using conflict resolution stuff. And so I'm playing with, with all of, you know, the curiosity is a big part of conflict resolution, I think. And um, yeah, so there's much more to know always. So it was really yeah. fun. Really yeah, fun. thank you. Well the, well, the well, the curiosity theory came out of like literally came out of um, um, work that I was doing with conflict resolution. Yeah, some of yeah. Marshall Rosenberg's work, and and yeah. it just came to me. Where I was writing a book out of something that happened, and I didn't have a title for the book, right. but I knew I was using curiosity to access what I was accessing. And then one minute, you know, one day I was like, "Curious, the curiosity theory," but it does use observations, feelings, and needs. We don't use yeah. um, requests; we use actions. You know, yeah. so we, we do use some of the technology. And these are my that's my needs and my feelings charts right there. There you go. Yeah. So well, yeah. we'll we'll have to talk about uh, conflict resolution and all this stuff at some point. That'll be. I fun. would love that. I would love yeah. that. Thank you very much for and thanks oh, for coming on. And real welcome. quick before you go, yeah. um, are you do are you doing workshops? And can you tell people how they can get a hold of your workshops? Are you what's going on? Yeah, here? I'm doing workshops um, on on this on and on, on growing empathy on on enhancing empathy. Um, I my website is pointsofviewconsultancy.com or to go quickly povconsultancy.com and there's a way of getting a hold of me on that my you can email me through that and uh, I'd love to hear from anybody even if it's just to give comment that would be great awesome and just to let you know she's not a big social media person she's know, you know I'm and terrible. that's okay but I just what, I'm like, trying to get better that. I'm trying I tried to get on Instagram and it wouldn't even let me get on it wouldn't even <laughs> let me create the account the other day it sent me the thing to my mail it said it sent to my email so that I could finish with the password it never came. It said, we can't do it. We can't do it. I was like, oh, the universe doesn't funny. even want me on Instagram at this point, apparently. I'm going to try again soon. Some of the most brilliant people I know have nothing to do with social media. <sighs> Brian Johnson from Optimize, uh, Cal Newport, you know, yeah. I mean, these are amazing people, you know, they're just, they're not on social media I'm at busy all. I'm busy doing know? other stuff. I don't want to get hooked into all that if I can <laughs> exactly, help. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's brilliant. And the point I'm saying that is for, so go to uh, you know, go to Hallie's uh, uh, Wait, website. Wait, Yeah. And and then what we'll do is we'll we'll go back and put it in the show notes. So it's not in the show notes right now, but as soon as we finish, I'll okay. go back and put all that stuff in the show notes. And would you send them to me so I can do that? Did you record did you... this or no? You didn't. It's record recorded. It, yeah, it's recorded. recorded. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I will talk to you about that because I I, I want to see it too again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Hallie. I really appreciate Thank you, you being That's here. That's great. Thanks. You bet. Bye bye. 
So, wow, what a what an amazing conversation. Thank you guys for hanging out. And as always, if you found value, please like and share. I just want to go through some of the some of the comments that people made. I don't know if Michael's still here. He said, such a truly neglect skill and art form. Love this, Martin Lopez. Oh man, thank you, Michael. Um, yeah, it, it's it's uh empathy is such a huge skill, curiosity, and how they all come together. Uh it's it's really amazing. I'm fascinated. And, and uh, you know, please take a minute, take some time, connect with Hallie, um, how she approaches, uh, how she approaches empathy uh, through acting and through writing. Uh, I can tell you that my access to what I'm doing in my growth right now, I don't act. Um, I do perform, I guess, right here. But I do write. I do write every morning uh, from about five o'clock to close to six o'clock, I'm on my keyboard and I'm writing. I'm constantly writing, constantly scribing, constantly, you know, getting what it is inside of me out. And um, I don't know if that's what she's doing, but I don't think it's too far from that. So thank you. Connect with Hallie and we'll see you next Saturday on the Curiosity Theory Hangout. Thanks for stopping by. And hey, Armando Aguilar, brother, thanks for being an amazing producer. We'll see you.